You and I have some terrible habits. Well, maybe not you, I don't know who you are, but I know I have some pretty bad habits when it comes to writing code and I'm gonna expose them in this video. I'm gonna go over my four worst programming habits and then you can check to see whether or not they align with your habits. And if they do, we can go on a journey of getting better together. But the main point of this video is showing off my bad habits as examples of what not to do so you can get better on your own journey. Anyways, let's hop straight into it. Not reading the documentation for a new language or framework or library that I was starting out on was a really bad habit that I had until I got rid of it about a year ago. Now I would tell myself, hey, I'm just gonna watch a few YouTube video tutorials and then just hop straight into the deep end of the pool. And then if I ever run into any errors or problems, I'll just debug it myself by just Googling around or just figuring it out myself. So that'll stick around in my head a lot longer. Now, I still agree with this to an extent. I still think if you debug a problem yourself, you're going to learn it better and it just sticks in your head for longer. But oftentimes you won't run into those stupid little errors that you're making when you're starting off with something new. If you just take 15 minutes to read the docs beforehand, instead of spending hours afterwards Googling what you're doing wrong. Not to mention when you read the docs, you understand what the correct style for that language or framework or library is. So you don't end up writing the worst looking code you've ever seen in your life and probably the worst code that's ever been produced on the planet. Clearly, spamming print statements is the correct way to debug. Now, you might think I'm joking, because I am, but this is really how I debug most of the time because I've never run into an issue that I couldn't either just spam print statements on or just mentally trace through and then debug. I can't expect this luck to last forever, but so far it's been working well, which means this bad habit of never actually using a debugger has persisted. And I actually know how to use debuggers. I know how to use them pretty decently. Last semester or two semesters ago in college, we were taking, I took a C class where we were just playing around with memory in C, which is a little harder to trace through mentally than just normal programs that I was writing. And we were introduced to GDB, which is a great debugger you can use for a variety of languages, C, Go, and a few others. And it's a really powerful tool that helps you understand exactly what your program is doing, step through different steps, you know, just play around with it. And when presented with this powerful tool, did I actually use it to debug problems that I was having with my homework assignments? No, I did not. Instead, I would just resubmit the same thing over and over again with a few errors for the few things Twit changed around and then just hope for the best. I would kind of like try to mentally trace through it, but instead I would just end up sitting there staring at my code, not understanding what was happening, changing random things and just hoping, hoping that the auto grader would let it by. And eventually that's what happened and I locked onto the correct code, but that's not something I can expect to happen every time. And that never actually taught me the lesson of continuing to use a debugger. I knew how to use it. I just did it. I don't know why. Horrible, horrible habit that I think most of us watching this video have. So join me in fixing that. Did you know that over 84% of you watching this video aren't subscribed? If you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button right now. It would help me in the channel out a ton. And don't forget to hit the like button while you're at it. All right, back to the content. Something many programmers, especially those that are starting out and especially those who started out in competitive programming, including me, think that shorter code means cleaner code, but this is very much so not the case. And this is a fallacy that I've subscribed to for a long time. And it's taken a lot of work to kind of just get over it and realize, hey, just because your code is short doesn't mean it's always going to be right. I've noticed this a lot when I'm writing Python because Python offers a ton of awesome solutions to write really nice one-liners for a lot of things. But a lot of the time when you're writing those one-liners, you're tempted to use very unclear variable names, just spam I, J, K, and L for everything. And you end up with this great solution that's efficient, it works fast, and you're, you know, it does everything you needed to do, but then you come back to it in a week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, and you have no idea what you wrote, unless you spend like 10 minutes just trying to read through your code, understanding every single step that you took. When in reality, you could have saved future self all of that time by just writing it nicely the first time. Take a little while, you know, break that code up into a few blocks, maybe use some descriptive variable names. You don't even have to comment it if the variable names are good enough and the code itself is simple enough. It's okay to make your code three, four lines longer, as long as you know you're not sacrificing efficiency too much. And remember, your future self will thank you. And if you ever get to the position where you're working with other people or friends on a project, they will thank you as well. This is a habit I really need to work on because if you go through my GitHub, please don't. It is a mess, but I'm getting better at it. And I hope the people watching this video that resonate with this will also try to get better at it. 
This isn't really related to the code you write specifically, but a bad habit that I have is not asking for help even when I need it. And this isn't because I'm some genius who understands everything on the first read through or the first write, but it's because I'm really just too stubborn to ask for help from other people. And I hope this resonates with some of you, otherwise I'm just going to look like a weirdo. Last summer when I was working at my internship, it took me quite a while to overcome the mental block of asking somebody else for help. The first few weeks of the internship, if I ever really ran into a problem, I would just sit there for a few hours and then try to understand what was going wrong. And then really, if it came down to where I had no idea what was going on, then I would ask for help. But that wasted a lot of time. And you know, if I'd spent maybe an hour trying to solve the problem and made no progress, then I should have asked for help instead of spending, you know, four hours. Over time, I got used to asking for help at you know proper intervals. You shouldn't always be asking your colleagues for help. You should ask after you've actually given the problem a good shot. But after the first few weeks of my internship, I got a lot better at asking for help. And that improved both my experience as the internship and the team's experience because they didn't have to, because they actually had an intern that was doing work and not just lounging around doing nothing, which is important. Now, obviously, if you're not in a position where you can just go and ask another real life human being for help in person, then that's a little bit harder to do to ask somebody for help when you're learning programming. But there's a lot of like online communities, there's a lot of discord servers for basically every programming language and major framework that you can hop onto and ask some questions in their questions channel. I have a discord server link in the description down below, but it's mostly other learners, other people that are learning how to code going on their journey. So don't expect the best help, but you can support each other. But yeah, if you are somebody that needs to find help, you can find help on the internet from real life people who are nicer than people on Stack Overflow because Stack Overflow is notorious for not being so nice. And just Googling your answer won't really give you the same benefit of understanding as talking through it with somebody else can. Now, obviously there's ChatGPT, but it's not good enough right now to think, act as completely as a personal tutor because it does get things wrong quite a lot, especially the more niche your field goes. But who knows, five years from now, you could just be asking ChatGPT everything and it'll be explaining it to you very, very well. But if there's one thing you learn from this section, don't be stubborn, don't be too prideful, ask for help when you need it and it will greatly accelerate your journey. That's about it for this video. I hope exposing my bad habits helped you in some way, maybe made you realize that you also have some bad habits that you need to work on. But either way, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button, share it with another friend who needs to hear it leave a comment, it would help me out a ton. And obviously, don't forget to subscribe. So hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. I hope you have a great day. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.